good evening ladies and gentlemen a very warm welcome to all of you into the q3 fi24 earnings call of last one and two group the earnings uh, presentation was uploaded on the stock exchange and in our website around 6:35 pm today evening um, as usual instead of going through the entire presentation i will walk you through the key highlights for the quarter in the next half an hour or so uh, post which uh, we will take uh, question answers uh, before i begin the overview uh, the usual disclaimer the presentation which we have uploaded on the stock exchange and our website today including the discussions that we will be having in this call contains or may contain certain forward looking statements concerning our business prospects and profitability which are subject to several risks and uncertainties and the actual results could materially differ from those in such forward looking statements in contrast to global trends the indian economy in q3 of 524 has continued to present a picture of resilience and momentum the investment activity remains healthy on the back of continuing public capex consumption spends have received some boost from the festival season in q3 better capacity utilization in the manufacturing sector strong real estate demand healthy credit momentum higher tax collections and an acceptable level of inflation all are aiding the growth prospects of the indian economy the fundamentals of the indian economy remain solid with healthier corporate and bank balance sheets fiscal consolidation is on course external balances remaining manageable and forex reserves providing cushion against any possible external shocks these factors combined with consumer and business optimism create congenial conditions for the sustained growth of the indian economy going forward as well before i get into details of the financial performance parameters i would like to share some important highlights for the quarter we are happy to report that our 9 month order inflows at a group level for fi24 at rupees 2.31 trillion has already crossed the full year the last full year fi23 levels largely on the back of large order wins in infrastructure revolving around renewable epc and associated utilities in the middle east urban mobility packages in india as well as onshore and offshore international wins in hydrocarbon business secondly the india's longest sea bridge connecting the indian city of mumbai with the satellite city of nami mumbai and named the sri atal bihari vajpayee trans harbor link or atal setu was inaugurated on the 12th of january 2024 our company was one of the major epc contractors involved in this prestigious project on january 22nd 2024 the honorable prime minister of india led the consecration ceremony of the sri ram janmabhoomi mandir in ayodhya we are pleased to inform you that this temple is also being constructed by lasun and tubro our hydrocarbon business has performed exceptionally well during the year the 9 month order inflow for this business at rupees 582 billion is a record high consequently the order book for this business has expanded to rupees 1.07 trillion as on december 23 coming to the it and technology services portfolio the voluntary attrition in both our listed entities lti mine tree and ltts has reduced both on sequential and by on by basis our financial services business has achieved the highest ever quarterly retail disbursements of rupees 149 billion and the retail portfolio today is at 91% of the overall book which stands at rupees 818 billion hyderabad metro received financial support of rupees 150 crore from the government of telangana during q3 the cumulative amount received under this facility till december 23 stands at rupees 900 crore some other important highlights during the quarter are we manufactured 
The first electrolyzer of 1 megawatt in the Hazira factory on December 13, 2023. On the green energy side, LNT Electrolysis Limited some emerged as a successful bidder with an allotted capacity of 63 megawatt under the tranche 1 of the PLI scheme for electrolyzer manufacturing launched by the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy. The data center at Panvel, a pilot project by LNT, has gone live with a capacity of 1.4 megawatt in the Mumbai region. Uh, furthermore, there is an upcoming data center uh, closer to commissioning of almost 12 megawatt in Chennai, expected to be completed in Q4 FY24. As men mentioned in our previous conversations, LNT plans to have an aggregate capacity of around 60 megawatts in the data center uh, domain over the next couple of years. Finally, uh, we incorporated a wholly owned subsidiary, LNT Semiconductor Technologies Limited, uh, on November 29, 2023. Over time, this company will be engaged in the business of fabulous semiconductor chip design and product ownership. I will now cover the various financial performance parameters for Q3 FY24. This quarter was a quarter of robust performance across the various financial parameters. Our group order inflows, revenues, and recurring PAT is up by 25%, 19%, and 20% respectively over the corresponding quarter of the previous year. Our NWC to revenue is at 16.6% in Q3 FI24, registering a sequential improvement of 10 basis points and 240 basis points on a Y on Y basis. Moving on to the individual performance parameters, our group order inflows for Q3 FI24 at rupees 760 billion registered a Y on Y growth of 25%. Within that, our projects and manufacturing businesses secured order inflows of rupees 602 billion for Q3, growing by 32% over the corresponding period of the previous year. Our Q3 FI24 order inflows in this projects and manufacturing portfolio are mainly from infrastructure and hydrocarbon segments. During the current quarter, the share of international orders in the projects and manufacturing portfolio was at 67%, vis-a-vis 12% in Q3 of last year. During the quarter, orders were received across various spectrum of businesses like offshore vertical of hydrocarbon, renewable EPC, water utilities, airports, health, residential spaces, power transmission, as well as ferrous metals. Moving on to the prospects pipeline, we have a total order prospect pipeline of rupees 6.27 trillion for the new for the near term vis-a-vis -vis rupees 4.87 trillion at the same time in the last year this represents an increase of 29% on a y on y basis the increase is largely due to the sharp improvement in the hydrocarbon prospect pipeline uh, I'll give you the broad backup uh, of the overall prospects pipeline of uh, uh, 6.27 trillion, uh, which is as follows. Infrastructure has a share of rupees 4.1 trillion. The same was rupees 3.88 trillion as of December 23. Hydrocarbon, rupees 1.7 trillion as of December 24 vis-a-vis -vis rupees 0.61 trillion as of December 23. Power business has an order prospects of 0.3 trillion as of December 24 as against 0.20 trillion last year. Heavy engineering defense in aggregate has an order prospects of 0.16 trillion which is almost at the same level that we witnessed as of December 23. Moving on to order book, our order book is at rupees 4.7 trillion as on December 23, which is up by 22% when compared to December uh, 22. 
as our projects and manufacturing business is largely india centric 61% of our order book is domestic and 39% international of the international order book of 1.84 trillion around 92% is from middle east and the balance and 2% from africa the remaining 6% constitute from various countries including southeast asia it is evident that the gcc capex in both infra and hydrocarbon is on an upswing largely led by the saudi vision 2030 the breakdown of the domestic order book of rupees 2.86 trillion which i said is 61% of the overall order book is as follows central government 12% state government 31% psu or state owned enterprises 35% and private sector 22% approximately around 18% of our total order book of 4.7 trillion is funded by bilateral and multilateral funding agency again 92% of the total order book is coming from infrastructure and energy you may refer to the uh, presentation slides for further details uh, during the quarter ended december 23 q3 fy24 we have deleted orders of close to rupees 27 billion from the order book as of december 23 our slow moving orders is well less than 1% of the total order book coming to revenues our group revenues for q3 fy24 at rupees 551 billion registered a y on y growth of 19% international revenues constituted 44% of the revenues during the quarter the strong execution in the projects and manufacturing portfolio drove the overall group revenues for the quarter in the projects and manufacturing business portfolio our revenues for q3 fy24 were at rupees 393 billion registering a y on y growth of 26% moving on to ebitda our group level ebitda margin without other income for q3 fy24 is 10.4% a drop of 50 basis points over q3 of the previous year this drop of 50 basis points is mainly due to job mix and cost pressures in the legacy epc projects of the projects and manufacturing portfolio the detail break up of the ebitda margin business wise is also given in the annexures to the earnings presentation you would have noticed that the ebitda margin in the projects and manufacturing businesses for q3 fy24 is at 7.6% we are again 8.5% in q3 fy23 on a sequential basis the ebitda margin in the projects and manufacturing business for q3 fy24 uh, improved by 20 basis points up from 7.4 that we printed for q2 of the current financial year i will cover the details a little later when i talk about the performance of each of the segments our recurring pat for q3 fy24 at rupees 29 billion is up 20% over q3 of the last year the robust pat growth is reflective of the strong execution momentum and the lower tax expense the group performance pnl construct along with reasons for major variances under the respective function heads is provided in the earnings presentation coming to working capital our nwc to sales ratio has improved from 19% in december 22 to 16.6% in december 23 an improvement of 240 basis points uh, the nwc to sales ratio was 16.7 in the previous quarter ended september 2023 our group level collections excluding financial services for q3 fy24 is rupees 494 billion vis a vis rupees 434 billion in q3 fy23 representing an increase of 14% on a y on y basis the improvement in gross working capital is on the back of improved customer collections and which is also in a way manifest in the overall improvement in the nwc to sales ratio finally a trailing 12 month roe for q3 fy24 is 15.2% vis-a-vis 12.4% in q3 fy23 
an improvement of 280 basis points. The improved profitability with every passing quarter along with the return of capital to shareholders in the form of first buyback that we did in, uh, in the month of September is contributing to this improvement. As stated in the past, the focus of the group during this period, the track plan period ending FI 26, will be on cash generation, divestments from non-core assets, capex and investments in existing and newer businesses, and finally returning surplus cash to shareholders at regular intervals in order to create value over a period of time. Very briefly, I will now comment on the performance of each of the business segment before we give our final comments on our outlook for the medium term. Uh, we'll start with infrastructure segment. On order inflows, this segment secured orders of rupees 432 billion for Q3 FI24, vis-a-vis rupees 325 billion in Q3 FI23, representing a growth of 33% over the corresponding quarter of the previous year. During the current quarter, the orders were largely received in the renewable APC, water utilities, airports, health, residential uh, premises, power transmission, as well as ferrous metals. Our order prospects pipeline in infra is around rupees 4.1 trillion vis-a-vis -vis rupees 3.889 trillion during the same time last year, representing an increase of around 5%. The infra prospects pipeline of rupees 4.1 trillion comprises of domestic prospects of rupees 3.22 trillion and international prospects of rupees 0.88 trillion. The subsegment breakup of total order prospects in infra uh, will be as follows. Uh, transportation infra uh, leads at 28%, and then we have minerals and metals at 17%, buildings and factories at 19%, water at 16%, power transmission distribution at 4%, heavy civil infra at 16%, uh, I think that aggregates to 100 the order book of this segment is at rupees 3.18 trillion as of December 23. The book bill for infra is around three years. The Q3 revenues at rupees 278 billion registered a strong growth of 27% over the comparable quarter of the previous year, largely aided by the strong execution progress across multiple jobs and across all the subsegments. Our EBITDA margin in this segment for Q3 FI24 is at 5.5%, vis-a-vis 7% in the corresponding quarter of the previous year. The margin for the quarter is a function of job mix and the legacy jobs tapering off. The working capital intensity has substantially improved during the same period, resulting in stable return ratios for this segment over a period of time. Moving on to the next segment, which is energy projects, which comprises hydrocarbon and power. The receipt of a mega order in the Middle East uh, enabled the boosting of hydrocarbon order book, whereas power business benefited from the receipt of an FGD order. We have a strong order prospects pipeline of rupees 2.01 trillion for this energy segment, uh, comprising of hydrocarbon prospects of rupees 1.7 trillion and power prospects of rupees 0.3 trillion. The order book for this energy segment is at rupees 1.13 trillion as of December 23, with the hydrocarbon order book uh, at rupees 1.07 trillion and power at rupees 54 billion. The Q3 FY24 revenues at rupees 79 billion uh, registered a healthy growth of 24%, mainly driven by the pickup in the execution ramp-up of international projects of the hydrocarbon business, whereas lower business in the power, uh, lower revenues in the power business is largely reflective of a depleting order book. The energy segment margin in Q3 FI24 is at 9.7%, vis-a-vis 8.7% in Q3 FI23. The hydrocarbon margin in Q3 is in line with the previous year, whereas favorable customer claim enabled the improvement in EBITDA margin for power. We will now move on to the high-tech manufacturing segment that comprises defense engineering and heavy engineering businesses. A receipt of multiple orders contributed to the order inflow in the defense business, 
whereas we witnessed order deferrals in the heavy engineering segment during the quarter. Our order prospects pipeline for this segment is Rs. 163 billion. Uh, the order book for this segment is Rs. 258 billion as of December 23. The strong momentum continues in defense, whereas heavy engineering revenue growth is impacted by uh, a little subdued progress in nuclear jobs. The defense margin is reflective of job mix, whereas customer claims enabled the heavy engineering margin movement. Uh, in, on this segment, I would like to repeat uh, the defense engineering business does not manufacture any explosives nor ammunition of any kind, including cluster ammunition or anti-personal landmines or nuclear weapons or components for any of such munitions. The business also does not customize any delivery systems for such munitions. Moving on to the next segment, that is information technology and technology services, where we have the two listed entities, LTI Mindtree and LTTS. The revenues for this segment at Rs. 112 billion in Q3 FY24 registered a modest growth of 5%, largely in line with the subdued global macro conditions impacting IT spends. Uh, despite ongoing macro concerns, the deal pipeline for this segment is healthy with good visibility across all offerings. Improved utilizations drive the margin improvement in LTI Mindtree, whereas LTTS margins are largely in line with that of the previous year. I would not like to take too much time on the segment as both the companies in the segment are listed entities and the detailed fact sheets are already available in the public domain. We move on to l and Finance Holdings, which is forming part of our financial services segment. Uh, here again, l and Finance uh, Holdings is a listed subsidiary, and the detailed results are already available in the uh, public domain. Uh, during the quarter, uh, l and Finance Holdings uh, had a merger of l and Finance Limited, l and Infra Credit Limited, and l and Mutual Fund Trustee Limited uh, with itself, and that got concluded. This merger will lead it to the creation of a simplified single lending entity and is expected to create internal synergy, superior governance, and unlock new revenues for growth. The Q3 of the current year revolved largely around a strong retail disbursement, which was possibly highest ever in a quarter, lower credit costs, better asset quality, and a rundown of the wholesale book. The balance sheet is strong on the back of an adequate provision coverage ratio and inbuilt macro prudential buffers are already there. Financial services achieved 91% retailization of its loan book in December 23, well ahead of its Lakshya 26 targets. The retail book growth, asset quality, and the return on assets are highly satisfactory. Finally, sufficient capital in the balance sheet is available to pursue growth in the medium term. In a way, the stage is set for this business to truly achieve fintech at scale. Moving on to the concessions portfolio, that's what we call as the development project segment. This segment includes the power development business comprising of Nava Power and also has Hyderabad Metro. Once again, I would like to mention that the profit consolidation of LNT IDPL, which is the holding company for largely a road uh, concessions portfolio, at a PAC level has been discontinued from Q4 of the last financial year post signing of definitive agreement for sale of our entire stake. The investment in the joint venture LNT IDPL, therefore, is classified as held for sale in the group balance sheet. The majority of revenues uh, in the development project segment is contributed by Naba Power. Uh, in the case of Re uh, uh, Hyderabad Metro, the improved ridership uh, enabled revenue growth, uh, and uh, Naba revenue was helped by higher PLFs. I like to give you some statistics on the Hyderabad Metro operation. The average metro ridership has improved from 3.94 lakh passengers a day in Q3 of the previous year to 4.44 lakh passengers per day in the Q3 of FY24. Our average ridership in the previous quarter of the current year was 4.62 lakh passengers a day, higher compared to the current quarter, uh, primarily due to the long holidays uh, or the vacation uh, for Q3, 
and also a free bus ride entitlement to females under the new Mahalakshmi scheme of the state government from December 23 onwards. The higher segment margin in Q3 FI 24 is primarily due to improved metro ridership and consolidation of NABA profits. Uh, the metro at a PAC level, we consolidated a loss of rupees 2.54 billion rupees in Q3 FI24, vis-a-vis -vis a loss of rupees 3.32 billion rupees in Q3 of the previous financial year. For nine months FI24, we consolidated a loss of rupees 3.49 billion against a loss of rupees 9.86 billion in the nine months of the previous financial year. Moving on to the last segment, which is others. Uh, this segment uh, comprises reality business, industrial walls manufacturing, construction equipment, mining machinery, rubber, rubber processing machinery, and a residual part of our uh, smart world and communication business. The Q3 revenue growth of 12% over the corresponding quarter of the previous year is mainly contributed by a higher percentage of handing over of fl residential flats in the reality business. The margin improvement in this segment is once again primarily contributed by the reality uh, business. Coming to the last part of my presentation, which is the outlook. As I said earlier, the Indian economy is demonstrating re resilience and is expected to grow by a healthy 7% in FI24. The country's uh, robust economic trajectory is supported by resilient growth in the public spends by government, improved demand conditions, robust balance sheets of uh, banks and corporates, uh, introduction of production-linked incentives, and as well as uh, high business confidence, uh, which is also attracting investments from the private sector. On the flip side, uh, we are yet to see a significant private sector participation around owning greenfield concessions in a major way. Also, with general elections around the, uh, around the corner expected to be scheduled any time between April, May 2024, uh, it is quite possible that the public capex could witness a temporary slowdown. The global economy remains volatile with continuing military engagement in Europe and West Asia that is disrupting supply chain and global trade movements. The U.S. economy has been resilient so far, but the U.K. and European economies are weak and the concern around China still persists. Despite these uh, concerns or developments, the good news for our project's business is that Middle East, particularly Saudi Arabia, continues to pursue its investment plans across multiple sectors. In this backdrop, the company possesses the necessary capability and flexibility to continuously rebalance its approach and strategy to benefit from the dynamic business environment. The company is focused on tapping emerging opportunities both in India and overseas, uh, with, driven by its proven competence in the domains of engineering, manufacturing, construction, project management, and services for the profitable execu execution of its uh, large order book. As it has always been, the continue, continues to, company continues to remain committed uh, to creating sustainable long-term returns for its shareholders. I will now comment on our guidance for FI24 before taking Q&A. On order inflows and revenue, we have performed exceptionally well both in terms of growth in order inflows and revenue in the ninth month, in the nine month period. In October, uh, post the Q2 FI24 earnings call, we had indicated that uh, we would be outperforming on the order inflow guidance for FI24 at the higher range of the band, which was 12%. And with respect to revenue, uh, we also commented that possibly we will outperform 15% uh, above, which is again the higher end of the band that we had given for revenue at the start of the year. Uh, basis the nine months order inflows that we have seen and the robust order prospects, uh, we are now revising our order inflow guidance to 20% plus for the full year. And for revenue, uh, we believe that we should be looking to achieving growth in high teams. Uh, it is difficult to pinpoint a specific range of growth possibility on order inflows, especially in a pre-election period, 
amplified by continuing international geopolitical volatility. Therefore, we are constrained to give the order inflow guidance a little open-ended in terms of saying that we should be landing at 20% plus order inflow for the full year FY24. Since we are already sitting on a large order book, our execution should carry on at a healthy clip, provided we are able to keep the capital intensity under check. Here again, as you all know, as a matter of discipline, we have never in the past pursued faster execu uh, execution at the cost of uh, compromising the working capital situation. We are therefore reasonably sure of achieving revenue growth in the high teens for the full year FY24. On margin, our progress on the nine-month margins in the projects and the manufacturing portfolio has been along expected lines. A combination of low margin legacy jobs and newer jobs being in the ramp up stage has depressed margin in the nine month period. However, it does appear at this juncture that the multiple new jobs which are in the ramp up stage may not be able to cross the valuation threshold for recognizing margin by the end of FI24, which means it could lead to some sort of a postponement of margin recognition uh, of these jobs into next year. Therefore, uh, we are fine-tuning our margin guidance in the projects and manufacturing portfolio from the earlier 8.59% band to uh, a band of anywhere between 8.25 to 8.5% for the full year. I would like to reiterate once again that the slip-up in margin, if any in this portfolio, is more than made up by volume growth and improved working capital intensity resulting in superior return on investment uh, by the end of the year. On working capital, since we have been able to preserve balance sheet gains in the nine months so far, we are revising the earlier guidance of a band of 16 to 18% to in and around the same levels that we achieved for December 23, which was at 16.6%. One can expect, uh, given the fact that Q4 is a busy quarter and also uh, you know, various other international and domestic events lined up, we can expect that this 16.6 can go up by plus minus 30 basis points on either side. Uh, with that, uh, I conclude, ladies and gentlemen, for the, uh, for, I try to give you an overall summary of our performance. Uh, we can get into Q&A. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchtone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Mohit Kumar from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Good evening, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. My first question is, uh, is, is, is rather a clarification. Is the mega order announced today for renewables from Middle East is part of the order inflow of the current quarter? Ah, yes, please. We got the client consent a while ago, and that's how we had to disclose it. This has been factored in Q3. Understood, sir. My, uh, my first question is the last part of order inflow has come from the Middle East, especially in nine months. And I think Aramco would be a substantial part of our order book. We understand that today Aramco has decided to cap the capex for hydrocarbon, given the directive from the government to maintain the production at 12 MBPD instead of 13 MBPD. Is it possible to give some color on the same and quantify if any impact of it has on our current order book and order inflow prospects? So, uh, as far as order book is concerned, what our orders that we have secured from all the clients, uh, I don't think there is any sort of a headwind in terms of the progress of those jobs because these are all uh, contracts that we have secured under customer approved projects. Okay. So going forward, uh, there could be developments, but we will have to evaluate and uh, see accordingly. Understood. My second question is, uh, there's an inordinate delay in the conversion of domestic prospect to order inflow. Uh, do you think the sickness of domestic order inflow 
conversion to sustain till election and to expect this to improve post the election? That's a key question. Okay, Mohit, actually when we started the year, when we gave a guidance of 10 to 12 percent, it had two factors into account. One was that we also communicated that the second part of the financial year could witness a subdued domestic tendering and award activity given the fact that the country will base up for elections in early calendar 24. This was already covered and that was one of the reasons that we started off the year with a 10 to 12 percent ban. Uh, but uh, as things would have happened, I think the last two to three quarters, uh, we have been, uh, I would say, favorably uh, supported by a good tendering award momentum insofar as Middle East is concerned and more specific Saudi. And here again, it's a mix of orders. It's not necessary in hydrocarbons, although hydrocarbons has taken a larger pie. But it is equally important for us to say that the Middle East orders constituted outside of hydrocarbons also some amounts of orders coming in from, uh, uh, you know, the power transmission and solar uh, kind of uh, practices. Understood. Thank you, sir. Best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sumit Kishore from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. My first question is in uh, on the equity investment of 27.7 billion in Hyderabad Metro uh, that you have announced. Uh, could you speak about the, the, the rationale and does this accelerate the process of getting a strategic investor on board? So, Sumit, you are referring to the uh, announcement that happened today? Yes. Okay. So, as you are aware, I think one of the most important uh, challenges we have uh, in the Hyderabad Metro, given the, the fact that that uh, company has a very high leverage, so what we have decided that some part of the finance, we have to reduce the interest cost for the Metro. So whatever has been given in the form of additional cash support no, for the last two years, some part of that is getting converted into equity. So it is not okay. a huge cash infusion, it is a, just a conversion of the LNT cash support which was given in the form of intercorporate deposit is getting converted into equity so as to reduce the financial burden of the metro operations. Okay, so there is no fresh cash infusion which is happening, right? No. Okay. And uh, uh, in terms of the timeline for getting a strategic investor into Hyderabad Metro, that remains unchanged. Maybe the next couple of years is where uh, you would be looking to. Yeah, at this juncture we are evaluating, but it's premature for us to comment on uh, any transaction happening. So we will keep the markets informed as and when we have any third party investor taking up a stake. Sure. Also, in terms of the CAPEX allocation for the new growth areas, uh, what is it that you are uh, sort of building in for the next two, three years for uh, data centers, electrolyzers, semiconductors, um, um, and uh, any other such areas? Thanks. So, in terms of uh, our committed investment to make up the electrolyzer manufacturing factory will be in the range of 500 to 600 crores, number one. On data centers, I had indicated that the plan is to ramp up to almost uh, 60 megawatt capacity, uh, which means in and around 2,000 odd crores. Uh, today, our data center capitalization has been around 645 crores. Another 1,400 crores will get capitalized as we set up the additional data center units. Uh, as far as uh, the third part semiconductor is concerned, uh, the board has approved an initial uh, equity outlay of almost close to $100 million, which is around 800 odd crores, uh, for meeting the immediate requirements of setting up the business. Uh, that's the initial investment. So as the, the, as the business, uh, you know, progresses, I think subsequent investments will be subject to uh, revisiting how the strategy to get into the business will happen. $100 million will be within a year time frame? No, it will be around possibly two years or so. Okay. Just finally on the core business. Position. Yeah. So I wish to, uh, okay, uh, good that you asked that question. Uh, in case we are also planning to look at some inorganic routes to ramp up talent and, you know, so it is quite possible that some part of that 100 million could go into backfill acquisitions also. 
sorry, it would go into some part of this 100 million equity will be used to acquire uh, design companies as well. Okay. Okay. So just one brief clarification, uh, you know, in terms of the core margin um, guidance, which has been diluted a bit, uh, does the uptick in margins, uh, you know, in subsequent quarters, so do the things fall in line in terms of the legacy projects getting completed, maybe by Q4 end, uh, you know, the projects entering the uh, margin recognition threshold, commodity prices have come off, so related margin improvement, which should happen. So all these things, do they come together in first half of FY25, or is this going to get delayed further? Okay, Sumit, when we started the year and we gave an initial guidance, uh, we also had communicated clearly that the margin will be dependent on how fast we are closing out the legacy projects and how fast we ramp up on the newer orders that we secured. Uh, in 21, uh, sorry, 22, 23, um, and possibly the later part of 21, 22. Unfortunately, whereas we are ahead in terms of completing at a faster pace the legacy projects, uh, some of the newer orders that we expected to achieve the margin recognition threshold in Q3 and Q4, that is Q3, the quarter that we just now uh, went by, and also Q4, that looks to be uh, getting postponed into next year. Uh, we do believe that, and it is witnessed in the way of the, the results also, 7.4, 7.4 Q1, Q2 margins. We have improved by 20 basis points. I guess you will see a sequential improvement in the margin trajectory of the PNM portfolio over the next four to five quarters. It would be very difficult at this juncture to pinpoint that the Structural improvement in margins, whether it will happen in first half or second half, I guess uh, we may have to wait until May when we close the books for March 24 and have the budgeting exercise by then for the business would have got completed to clearly tell you where exactly the improvement in margins will happen from which point of time. Sure. So the expectation is it gets better from here. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Parikshit Kanpal from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, PR. Uh, congratulations on a decent quarter. Uh, so my first question is on the claims. So uh, we have been saying that we have been filing for claims post-COVID. So, so if you can help us understand how much would have got settled or realized during this quarter. So uh, Parikshit, as I think when we talked about that in our margin guidance when we provided we had excluded, you know, many large claims because they are at various levels of discussions with the customer and all. In a normal course of business, there are always when jobs get completed, it's no job is ever saying that, you know, you will not have a claim or there will not be no extra uh, claim by l &T on the customer or vice versa. So those things are happening. At this juncture, what are major claims that we are pursuing? Some of them have yet to, uh, you know, uh, come favorably in LNT's. Uh... Okay. So as a full year, as a nine month, as a whole, how much uh, claims would have been recognized uh, in the nine month of 524? Oh, that's an uh, aggregate level will be in the range of maybe around what? Uh, you can say around 200 to 300 crores. But that has got, it's part and as I said, no? When I talked about the claims we have excluded, these are claims where are for specific projects, which are large and which is at various levels of discussion to the customers. Uh, we are not talking of the normal claims that happen on a, on a normal project execution. So there is nothing for me to draw your attention that how much of claims which are unusually large uh, has, uh, you know, factor, has been factored in the nine month results of the current year. Okay. Okay. So my second question is on, uh, you just said that your legacy project execution is better than expected and your new projects, you are know, getting a little longer and elongated to reach the margin threshold. So are there any challenges on the ground uh, which you are facing that uh, you have not been able to uh, improve the execution there, though you have upped your guidance to heighten on revenue growth, but still, I mean, are you struggling or facing challenges on ramp up of the new, new project wins? Now, let me tell you that um, 
there are no specific challenges that I need to put it across as far as the execution of new projects are concerned. Typically, when a project is awarded, it use, usually goes through a, almost an average six months kind of engineering phase, and then you have the procurement phase, and at the same time, when the procurement starts, the site mobilization also happens. So this is typically, I would say, that the new project execution has been possibly what we thought the project execution covering the marg uh, crossing the margin recognition threshold in Q3 and Q4 is getting postponed to next year. So it's not something which is, we will not be able to, in case there is execution delay, we will lead it to a slippage of time. No, it is not that way. It's more to do with the ramp up and not having estimated that we will get into margin recognition threshold either in Q3 or Q4, that part has got postponed. Nothing otherwise substantial change. Okay. And just on the legacy order books, so when we talk about legacy order books, so that we've been talking to some quarters now. So so how do we quantify, how do we see that this legacy project will get executed, handed over, completed? So so what would be the duration of the legacy order book in terms of execution now and what will be the quantum of the legacy order books? So let me put it the other way, I'll respond it. Four point seven trillion uh, order book that we have is largely today a major part of that order book comprises of projects that we have secured in 21-22 uh, later part and 22-23, including the current nine months also. So we are, I can say, uh, completing the legacy part of the order book that orders that we secured uh, prior to 2021 and maybe the first six months of 21-22, given the fact that the average execution is across all these projects have been in and around that 24 to 28 months. So. I would say that today order book what we have, uh, the legacy part of our order book is fastly depleting and hopefully from next year onwards you should be seeing an improved execution of the current orders. So is it right to believe that by first quarter of FY2025 the legacy projects will largely be done with and we see a higher share coming in from new or better margin projects in the mix? I'll put it that way that the share of revenues for next year would be largely coming from the newer orders. Okay. And just the last question, if I may, on the real estate business, sir. So if you can help us with some numbers there in terms of nine months, what would be the pre-sales uh, from this business? In terms of nine months, the revenue of uh, the reality business is uh, 1,900 crores. What about the pre-sales number, total value of the sales done, sales booking of sales? Okay, so I will tell you that the, uh, the order inflow no, that LNT Realty has had for the nine months uh, is almost uh, 2100 crores, and for the quarter it was around 525 crores. Okay, okay, sir, thank you and wish you the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Aditya Bhartia from Investec. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, good evening, sir. So just wanted to understand uh, once again, uh, what is really happening on the domestic order inflow side? Uh, not only in this quarter, but pretty much in uh, the last three quarters, it has been quite weak. Uh, while while uh, you've been kind of commenting that uh, overall CAPEX numbers are looking good, which is what we are seeing otherwise as well. Uh, so, so why is it that uh, LAT is not winning orders? So uh, I don't think... Uh, there is anything specific to uh, talking about the share of domestic orders and all, but let me give you some uh, statistics, okay? So uh, Q3 of the current year, our core projects and manufacturing order inflows was around uh, 60,167 crore, okay? As against Q3 of the previous year, which was almost 46,000 crore. So there has been increase of 32%. Now, the only point, as you rightly mentioned, uh, the composition of that 60,167 crores of core order inflows, the domestic is around 19,000 or 20,000, so to say, and the balance 40,000 is coming from international. The same composition of domestic in the previous year of the order inflow of 46,000 crore, the share of domestic was 40,000 and balance uh, 6,000 crore was international. So definitely uh, there has been, uh, I would say, a little 
um, I would say subdued domestic ordering, but as I responded to a previous question, when we gave the order inflow guidance at the start of the year of 10 to 12 percent, it was factored that that domestic order uh, momentum could see a little amount of slippage because of uh, the election year and all. So whatever we have seen in the first six months, I think that has been more than uh, more than our own estimates. Uh, but what has enabled us to demonstrate order inflow growth is the as I talked about, the resurgence of water inflows from the Middle East. So, uh, what you're trying to highlight is that overall economy level ordering itself would have been uh, quite weak. Uh, uh, and it's not as if LNT has been, LNT has lost some orders to competition or the smaller guys have become more active. Pretty much economy level ordering itself would have come down. Let me put it the other way for many of the orders where we have bid for larger orders, I think uh, we have had a good uh, conversion rate of when we have submitted it. There is nothing for us to point out at this juncture that we are losing out significant amount of domestic ordering opportunities to competition. Understood. Uh, same thing, sir, if we look at the uh, revenues as well, on the domestic side, revenue growth has been roughly, I think, 6 or percent uh, 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 for, for, for the core entity level, as a core entity level. Uh, uh, so that also has been a bit muted. Anything that we should be reading over there? No, it is in line with our own uh, internal estimates. For example, the total projects and manufacturer revenue for Q3 of current year was almost 39,000 crore, 25 percent increase uh, as compared to around 31,000 crore of the Q3 of the previous year. Uh, the share of domestic uh, was almost uh, 25,383 crore as a part of that 39,305. Um, so it constitutes a major portion, but the growth in domestic vis-a-vis -vis the domestic portion of the previous quarter, the Q3 of the previous year, has been a little subdued. Sure. And last thing from my side, uh, uh, there have been some media articles about uh, 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 some land monetization at Hyderabad Metro Project. Uh, if you could share some uh, insights about what's happening on that front. So this was already done in Q2. I think uh, we have already did the, there was a part parcel of real estate monetization that we did in Hyderabad Metro in the previous quarter. But so there was something about uh, 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 three malls being put on, uh, put in a REIT or something? Ah, okay. So I, I am I am talking about that what we did in the previous quarter. What you are looking at in the media is, at, at this stage, I would say it could be speculative. Understood, sir. Sure. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nitin Arora from Access Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Hi, Pia. Thank you for taking my question. Uh, sorry, I'm... Uh, might be repeating the same question, but generally the backlog has grown very significantly. You're a 4.7 trillion backlog company now. Generally, I'm not asking you a very quarter specific question when the margin will improve or, you know, uh, generally on first on taking a new order intake, uh, you know, what is the thought process of the growth? Is it the backlog itself has become too huge and you might go slow next year? Obviously, there's an election year, so order might become slow itself, uh, but is there more appetite of taking this order? I'm not trying to gauge on guidance for next year, but you're already growing at 20%. So on that 20, do you like to grow still in double digits or it's rather a team wants to execute more and go slow and get back the profitability back? Just a little structural question here. Okay, so Nitin, I will answer to your last question. I think uh, LNT's focus has been to ensure that whatever bids we submit, we have protected margins. Any sort of risk that are envisaged is getting factored while we are bidding for all these projects, number one. Number two, in terms of whether we are going forward considering the fact that our order book is uh, close to almost maybe by March 24, we should be even touching 5 lakh crores. Uh, would we be changing our, uh, I would say, bidding mechanism? I don't think it is right for us to say that way. The reason is that the entire projects and manufacturing business is dependent on various sectors, 
changing from a transportation infra to uh, metro metro uh, or a heavy civil infrastructure or buildings and factories so we mm-hmm. have uh, segments catering to virtually any sector where there is a project opportunity so it all depends for each of the businesses or sub segments that we have in infrastructure or in hydrocarbons like in hydrocarbons we have an offshore and onshore vertical depending on capacity what we have we will be addressing opportunities which means in some of the segments where we have not had significant amount of order intake we will use and possibly bid very competitively for order opportunities that come and in some of the segments where we have a healthy order backlog i think we will have a situation where we will try to obviously start looking at larger and cherry picking opportunities got it okay okay and uh, you know you yourself said that large amount of new orders will come in execution next year uh, but in terms of execution do you see a challenge because uh, generally first 6 months being an election year labor shortages everything gets real into issue when it comes to execution uh, or uh, you have large amount of international backlog as well so execution would not be a challenge how one should look uh, the growth for lnt for next year uh, i mean given few challenges on execution as well so nitin at this juncture i can only comment of the fact that we have a, a robust order backlog as of december and expected to remain robust as of march 24 also uh one thing is that the domestic execution activity could be a little subdued in q1 considering that that would be an election quarter post that there is a new government that will come in so q1 could be subdued at this juncture it's very difficult to comment upon whether the q2 execution there will become completely normalized i think it's not correct but as you rightly mentioned uh what we see Uh, some amount of uncertainty given the fact that there is a general elections in the country i don't see any such uh, i would say risk emanating from the other alternate geography of jobs that we are doing in middle east got it uh, thank you pr and all the best to the team thank you we have the next question from the line of renu beg from iifl securities please go ahead Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Um, I have two questions. First, um, just broadly trying to understand on the margin side, uh, why for the next uh, four quarters you did give an indicative. Uh, but uh, broadly speaking, um, initially or earlier you typically mentioned that you know once the backlog improves and the legacy orders are done, probably in few quarters we should be inching towards double-digit margin. Given the fact that. Uh, a fair share of recent this year inflows have come from international hydrocarbons which typically tends to carry high single digit margin will that also have an implication on our uh, targets to get back to double digit margins in the next couple of years because execution on these projects will then ramp up in margin resolution thresholds and that may impair the overall blended um, margins for the core pnm business for us so renu uh, i can only comment upon what i see at the near term perspective because as you may be aware that many of the jobs are fixed price contracts hopefully if the contract gets executed on time the margins that we bid and the margin that we reported could be substantially in the favorable side higher okay so we anyway run that risk but as we see it today i think on a quarter on quarter basis i think we should be looking at improvement in margins in the projects and manufacturing portfolio now in terms of getting into uh, i would say double digit margin i think it is a sort of a question of time but i wish to reiterate here that the jobs that we have secured in the recent past which is forming part of major part of the order backlog are all jobs where uh, there has been no compromise on our as bid margin uh, with a clear focus on improving profitability and also at the same time uh, you know ensuring that we have favorable payment terms so that actually has been the practice of the process that has been followed now how these how these jobs will shape up in terms of execution progress and completion is a question of time on a near term basis i think we can comment to say that lnt will demonstrate 
a sequential improvement of margins over the next four five quarters uh, sure but if we look over a medium term perspective so ultimately let me put across my question in this format do you perceive the current change in the backlog which you've had in the current year uh, will that have an implication on your margin profiles over the medium term as these projects come for execution and also the revised uh, net working capital guidance uh that also probably factors a share of uh, improvement coming in from the favorable backlog and the advances that you have uh, from these international market and geographies uh, so let me put it i did mention in my the, the the answer that i gave it to your first question that many of the recent jobs that we have secured are all fixed price contracts it is up to us if we are able to manage the execution within the targeted timelines the actual margins could be favorably more or could be more than the aspect margins now obviously it is premature for us to comment at this juncture because the jobs that we have secured over the last four or five quarters they are all getting into the startup phase so hopefully i think since we have factored all known risk while we have priced these orders hopefully i think and since many of the international orders are strictly speaking not the kind of tendered orders that we witness in india so the embedded okay. margins should be in our favor going forward but it all depends on execution progress in line with the contractual commitments got it and just a bookkeeping question um, on the order backlog exposure to middle east today uh, can you just highlight what is the total backlog exposure to middle east and in specific to saudi so the total order backlog that we have is at 4.7 trillion okay uh mm -hmm. out of that the international order book is 1.84 trillion okay out of 4.7 92% of that is from middle east and 92 and 80% of the 92% of 1.84 is from saudi got it got it thanks much pr and the best wishes thank you thank you the next question is from the line of priyankar biswas from bnp pariva xn please go ahead uh, thanks we are for taking my question uh, so my first question is uh, with regards to middle east so just a clarification question so it was reported in the media that uh, uh, lnt is well placed on a multi billion uh, safania oil projects order so can you just answer if this is already included in this quarter or this is something yet to be finalized so that's the first one what is included in which in which uh, included in what in order prospects uh no i mean uh, in the current uh, quarter order inflows no i mean without getting an order how can i show it in order inflow okay uh and furthermore if you can just give me some certain data points like uh, what would be the fixed price uh, the share of contracts today uh, out of the overall order book and uh, also i think it was also highlighted during last quarter probably that uh, around 6 billion types was the solar epc order book that is there so given that the solar module prices have fallen so much so shouldn't we be seeing some sort of a margin uptick in the very near term okay so two things uh, as far as some of the solar orders that we had secured uh, when the module prices were very high at that point of time uh, many of the orders had clear pass through variations to the customer so which means favorable and adverse movement in uh, rom, uh, in input prices on these orders is to the account of the customer so it is unlikely that favorable movements in solar modules will flow into margins that's the first point and the second point i'm sorry what is the other question please uh, the fixed price uh, uh, okay. share yeah, of so the, the order book 4.7 order book that we have so roughly around 42 to 43% of the order book is fixed price contracts now so this is evident because we have been always maintaining at one third fixed price contracts and two third contracts that have variable so to say linked to indices and all but because of the some of the orders that we have been securing in the recent past so the share of fixed price contracts has actually gone up so you can take it around 42 to 43% of the order book is fixed price contracts so just one more question that i have so since uh, the uh, 
related party debt that was there in Hyderabad Metro has now been converted to an equity. So on a reported basis, would there be, what is the savings in interest costs that we should see going forward? So from a loss stabilization point of view, I'm trying to see it on that respect. See, the total amount of debt conversion to equity has been in the range of 3,000 odd crores, okay? And if you take around 8% as the interest cost, the savings for the year will be 240 crores in the metro books. Okay. Thanks, Pia. That's all from it. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pulkit Patni from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thanks for taking my question. Just one question, uh, and, and a lot of people have asked you questions on Middle East exposure, but but as a company today, we are almost 40% order backlog exposed to international, and while obviously you would have uh, done all the risk assessment, uh, but, you know, geopolitics is, is, is uh, pretty uncertain right now. So is there an upper threshold beyond which we would not increase our exposure to international or we are okay taking this number even to say 45-50% if that's where the opportunity is. Any thoughts on how we should look at our international exposure say over the next uh, 24 months? So Pulkit, uh, I think in the next uh, two, three quarters, the order prospects from India and Middle East would be equally significant, not necessarily in terms of value, but in terms of proportion, okay? And uh, we are mindful of the fact that when we are working for projects outside India, uh, we establish uh, or we ensure that our relationship with the client, the financing for the project, and the terms of payment and all other conditions are in line with our own uh, risk framework process. Now, given the fact that uh, in the last one year, there has been a spate of orders coming from Middle East, we are also ramping up of our resources organization out there so many of the senior people for very large projects have got already relocated. So we have now contract management teams actually stationed out locally. Uh, we are also improving the demography of the workforce out there to have uh, people out, you know, who can understand uh, the, the local nuances so that it will enable us to sense if there are any implications or developments going forward and to take any sort of preemptive action. So a choice of the sector, which means uh, what is the sector relevant to that country? Who is the sponsoring agency? Who is the awarding customer? I think all of these things are playing a big role while we address the upcoming opportunities or the past opportunities and equally uh, favorable set of opportunities that are emanating out from this part of the world. It is not only restricted to Saudi, I would say, I think we, we are looking at, and we have recently also, today itself, we announced a press release. This was a job in UAE. So we are we also secured a, a large petro, a hydrocarbon projects in the country of Qatar. So we look at the project sponsor, the customer, the project, how important it is for the customer, so that we are reasonably sure that it is appropriately funded, and we get our payments on time. It is all with the backdrop that we will do our project ex execution in time as well, to which I responded that we have increased uh, the scale of leadership for all the jobs in the Middle East itself. Sure. Uh, my, my second question and, and sort of connected to, to the first one is on our combination of margin and working capital. For the last uh, nine odd months, uh, we've been saying that while our margins are weak, working capital sort of takes care of it, and as a result of it, our cash margins have been pretty similar to what we had originally thought. Now, as you look at next year, uh, as these international jobs come in, would that thought process continue that while our working capital will be low, even if our margins remain in the current range, we should be net-net okay? Or are we saying that margins will also improve and working capital also, because international will become a bigger part of execution, can also get better from here? So, Pulkit, I did respond to, I think, Renu's question that many of the jobs that we have in the Middle East are fixed-price contracts. I wish to reiterate that timely completion of jobs is very essential. If you complete it on time, your margins will be definitely in line with the bid-out margins, which I explained that how we have been following the bidding process. We have not followed, we have not pursued volume on the sake of sacrificing profitability. 
but the project execution which is the part of our i mean core epc business hopefully if that happens on time we could see an improvement of working capital or working capital in and around the same levels because 16 17% is quite favorable as compared to 23 24 that we were reporting three years back so even at the current working capital an improvement in margins is definitely the objective and hopefully it should happen okay very helpful thank you pierre thank you the next question is from the line of rahul gajare from haitong please go ahead yeah hi pr uh, thanks for the opportunity now some of my questions have been answered you know with respect to middle east and all now i want to stick to uh, you know the margin part of the question uh, given that we have a high exposure on middle east which you know are fixed price contracts uh, you have also indicated that a lot of margin booking will actually slip into fi25 now does can you talk about what are the levers that you will have you know, to see improvement in margin you know when you compare uh, to the other players in the industry does does faster execution get you better margin is that something which happens or your margin will be fixed irrespective of whether you do it in time or do you whether you do it faster so obviously uh, i'll put it this this way rahul if you are able to do a timely execution because when when we bid for a project obviously we factor buffers contingencies and all right to take care of cost overruns and time overruns now if you are able to complete the project on time then the buffers that are related to time overruns get released and similarly when it relates to uh, if you are able to, and since it's a fixed price contract as part of the risk mitigation mechanism we also follow that wherever possible at the time of bid submission itself major critical parts of you know equipment that we need to procure they are also usually hedged on a back to back with the identified vendor so timeliness of execution will ensure release of buffers on the time contingency part and any cost saving because of commodity prices you know easing off from what we had assumed will also enable us to improve but it will work either way okay fair enough um the second question i have want to understand is uh, what is the capacity utilization of your btg plants right now you know given fairly high potential of new thermal plants uh, in india i'm wondering why is lnt not going uh, you know fast on the thermal uh, power ordering especially you know i would think the order, the margins in that particular order should be better than that that you would be getting in the international geographies so your comment on this entire power uh, related uh, business would be helpful so rahul i think over the last 2 to 3 years uh, the power epc business has been supported by award of fgd opportunities uh, which are the ones which we are executing currently there has been certain uh, i would say some amount of coal based epc awarding that is happening uh, but we are taking each uh, bid uh, in its independent way and if the terms of the contract are favorable to what lnt thinks are terms which we will enable us to improve or have better margins at the same point of time having a exposure to working capital which is optimum if so, until such time happens i think we will carefully evaluate all the bids that are coming up in the epc side of the coal based power plants in the country although there is a revival uh, i think there has been awarding of almost 27 gigawatts of uh, awarding has happened or expected to happen or under execution and i think there is a target to possibly take 80 gigawatts by the end of 2030 so some amount of coal based orderings are going to happen but each of these uh, opportunities will be addressed on a stand alone basis in terms of whether the terms are favorable to us from a contractor's perspective and what is the utilization of the plant right now right at this juncture i think it would given the fact that the order book is uh, uh, depleting so we are operating maybe around 30% but some part of the uh, uh, the facility will be also now getting converted to many making other uh, other equipments for other sectors okay and typically if to break even what is the kind of utilization that you need for the uh, these power btg plants it will be around 50% or so okay fair enough thanks uh, thanks pr and all the best thank you 
The next question is from the line of Aditya Mongya from Kotak. Please go ahead. Um, um, thanks uh, for the opportunity um, and hi, PR. Uh, I have two questions from my side. The first question is related to um, uh, assessing what is the share of your backlog that comes in from um, uh, Saudi Aramco. And if you could give some more color uh, on today's development and how you see through it from the perspective of incremental growth uh, coming from the customer. So Aditya, I think it will not be appropriate for me to address a specific query with respect to any exposure on a specific customer. So I just wanted to tell our exposure to uh, to Saudi Arabia is in the range of 1.34 trillion, which is the 80% of the 92% of our international order book. Uh, but I don't want to comment on specific customers. It will be inappropriate. Secondly, um, why we have given our guidance for the full year on order inflows that we expect to cross 20%. Factors, whatever information that is available to us at today's point of time. So I will put it that way. Um, understood. Uh, and the second question, uh, uh, PR, was more generic uh, on margins. As in, margins have been uh, volatile in the past. Um, wanted to get a sense of what are the key learnings uh, from the perspective of l &D. And in that context, uh, going higher on fixed price contracts as a share of backlog, is this something that is counterintuitive? So um, let me put it like this, Aditya. I think it's not correct for to say that margins have been volatile. Um, I did mention about the fact is that we have had some amount of margin depression, especially in the infrastructure segment. Given the fact for a whole lot of reasons that I have explained in the previous calls also, Okay, uh, but one thing it is important for us to equally say yes, it's a function of maybe competitive intensity why we bid for those projects backed up by COVID led delays, um, then increase in the commodity cost for which we did not have a pass through, and some important claims uh, that uh, we were pursuing and it's not getting crystallized. So I don't think it will be right for us to say it has been volatile. Yes, it has been a little subdued. But uh, now that the legacy jobs have got completed and we have a, a more or less recently refreshed order book from the orders that we have secured from later part of 21, 22, and 22, 23, I reiterate once more that one could see a sequential uh, improvement in margins. When I say sequential means I'm talking a why on my sequential. It's, it's not like Q1 over Q4 but definitely an improvement in margins uh, over the next six to seven quarters. Uh, thanks, Pierre. And just a last question from my side. Um, as in, you already had an ROE of 15.4 uh, at, at margins that are there today, and you said that double-digit margins are a kind of a matter of time. As in, at those kinds of margins, um, the, the ROEs would be, let's say, north of 18, 19, 20 percent. Um, in the kind of business that you operate, is it something that can be sustained for uh, for a period of time? You are referring to margins or you are referring to capital intensity? What I'm saying is that current margins, your ROE is about 15 odd percent is what you said in your opening remarks. Yeah, some um, part of the improvement in uh, ROE will be attributed to increase in margins. So if today we are in a margin trajectory, if you say 8.5 and Obviously, a 1% improvement over a period of time will ensure uh, ROE improvement almost of uh, maybe 1, 1.5%, but subject to the fact that we are able to keep the working capital in around the 18% level. Uh, understood. Uh, uh, thanks a lot, Pierre, for those uh, remarks. Those are my questions. Thank you, and all the very best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amit Mahavar from UBS. Please go ahead. We need PR. I just have one question, and uh, apologies if it sounds repetitive, but it um, seems that uh, in a post-COVID era, we started taking note of uh, risk of time delays, which impact the cost vis-a-vis -vis the inflationary impact uh, on business. So that is leading us to take a lot of contracts in the Middle East uh, as a lead contractor, a lot of new kind of contracts also. Vis-a-vis, um, -vis, uh, you know, a conventional thinking of share of Middle East versus share of India, or you know, lower margin in Middle East versus higher margin in India. Are we heading towards a directional strategy of um, choosing, um, you know, inflationary risk uh, 
of executing large uh, Middle East or Indian project vis-a-vis -vis time delays, which has been more harmful to us in the last one to two years. I just wanted to understand uh, if the understanding is correct. So, so let me tell you, Amit, I think both points are equally important. We cannot say we will have preference of one over the other. I think as an EPC contracting business, um, as possibly, possibly we are one of those very few EPC contracting organizations where despite the, uh, the, the ups and downs of the underlying investment spend for which we get the contract and despite taking uh, a, a plethora of contracts across geography and across domains, I think we have been able to keep a, a, a higher volatile margin sector to a more predictable margin sector. That is primarily because of the mix of jobs, mix of geography, mix of clients, everything put together on top of it our relentless focus on timely uh, execution. I think that has ha only helped us to ensure that uh, we are able to at least bring some amount of uh, stability in an otherwise volatile um, EPC contracting sector from a margin perspective. I think the one thing that we would like to acknowledge or recognize is that over the last three years, there has been a relentless focus that while we grow the business in terms of size and scale. We also focus on the working capital intensity and that has in a way that intensity has helped us and that is going right up to the business unit and the project level that we do projects or we complete projects or we progress on projects only to the extent of money is coming on time. And in case if projects are not, customers are not in a position to make payments on time, such of these projects would see some amount of delays. but with appropriate contractual commitment conditions so that later on we don't have any adverse surprise. Understood. I mean, maybe I can conclude this statement saying, you know, bid margins for the realized margins and NTA started becoming more focused on the realized margins. Thank you, Pierre. Second and uh, quick question is, um, within the core business, uh, how will the construct change with respect to the revenue composition vis-a-vis, -vis, say, historically we used to have EPC versus manufacturing business, uh, which used to give us a good blend of core profitability. Um, three to five years from now, not today, um, do, do you think we are moving towards a band where the core margins will head north just beyond the core, um, you know, cyclical margins improving EPC to a much better margin with a blend of um, manufacturing high value add versus EPC margin and any, any mix of revenue you would want to give over a five year. Thank you. So actually, this is a Q3 call, Amit, and you're asking me a strategic question, but I will attempt to answer that. I said it would be better that we cover that during a yearly start call. But uh, yes, the, as I see it, I guess from a, a portfolio where we have projects manufacturing and services, today structurally services will be 25% of top line and 75% top line coming from projects and manufacturing. Within that, the projects part takes a lion's share because the manufacturing comprises largely of heavy engineering and defense, uh, which are, of course, from an EBITDA perspective, more profitable. Uh, but I would like to reiterate that uh, it's not correct to say that we will focus on projects and manufacturing as it has always been. I don't think there will be a change in strategy, so to say. The only thing is we will target as our order book grows, I think we are becoming more and more competent to address large opportunities, which means where the competitive intensity will be uh, more reasonable and hopefully better tendering terms even for India projects should enable us to inch up on the profitability scale without expanding the balance sheet. Uh, helpful, Pia. Can I sneak in one last one-line question? Um, in the current... Uh order book, do you have any risk of cancellation of any large Middle Eastern contract at this stage? That's it. Thank you. No. Okay. 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 Thank you, PR, and good luck to the entire team. Good luck. Thank you, Amit. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will take that as our last question. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. P. Ramakrishnan for closing comments. Over to you, sir. So, thanks, everyone, for attending this call. It was my pleasure to interact with all of you. Uh, good luck and wishing you all the very best. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Larson and Tubro Limited, that concludes this conference.
Thank you all for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines.